one of us. Uh, just to give a summary, he did his PhD from HRI, like many of us. And he has been working in effective field theory, quite a good amount of work he has done over the past few years. And today he would be talking about effective field theory compendium for exploring BSM. So uh, you can ask your questions or doubt. Uh, if you want to ask, you can raise your hand or you can write in the chat box. I will be looking for it and then I'll uh, give you the mic. And, uh, and also you can ask question uh, after the talk. Uh, the scheduled time is basically 45 minutes, but uh, we can continue after the uh, seminar also if you have some queries. So, uh, Jaidi, please, uh, you can start. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Pratosh uh, and Manimala and other organizers uh, for organizing this wonderful and very timely uh, conference because I believe in last uh, you know, four or five years, and, uh, there's so much development and the modern aspect of the effective field theory that uh, this is a much needed uh, conference other we can share our thoughts. Uh, so uh, today I'll be talking about the effective field theory compendium uh, for exploring uh, BSM. Uh, and uh, uh, thing is, uh, yeah. So uh, the questions that uh, we as a- Sorry, you know, Jaiji, uh, yeah. just one minute. So Manimala, can you switch off the video? Because I think Jaiji's bandwidth is not good. Yeah. Okay. So because his voice yeah. is breaking, yeah. So let's switch Am off the camera. Yeah. Am I audible now? Yeah. yeah. You are you are fine now. Go ahead. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, for uh, for last four or five years, uh, we're trying to you know address one uh, question, uh, which is actually uh, captured in this uh, diagram. So the idea is basically you know, like all of uh, us, uh, we are aiming to understand the physics beyond the standard model or the new physics uh, thing. And we have adapted different kind of you know in the methodologies. And the methodologies that we are at, we have adapted uh, that is based on the uh, notion of the effective field theory. So the idea is uh, the question is uh, following. So if you have different kind of proposed theories, like as you can see in the top uh, L5, uh, 5 l one L5, 5 j 2 and there are different theories and there are different uh, Lagrangians uh, there. And then, uh, you know, uh, when you try to uh, do some kind of phenomenology and so on, they have their own signature and uh, something like that. But we know uh, in the process of model building, actually we have built so many models. So now it is, if we, even if we uh, get some kind of uh, data, uh, exciting data from the experimental side, it is very difficult to pin down that uh, this data will signify what kind of, or what class of new physics. I mean, uh, so to say that, uh, I mean, the fam in familiar language, the inverse uh, problem. Uh, so uh, rather than uh, doing uh, individual model and trying to understand the analysis, even if you perform that, uh, when you propose those theories, it's very difficult to compare uh, them. So what we thought uh, that it will be a good idea if we can bring down at some platform uh, where they are described by the same number of degrees of freedom and they are described you know, by the same kind of symmetry and so on, uh, such that we are not comparing apple and orange, so to say, maybe like apple and apple kind of thing. So that's the basic uh, idea uh, behind this uh, diagram. So we are approaching this uh, from the both ends, uh, from the energy scale point of view. From the bottom uh, up approach, when you have this, you know, the standard uh, as a low energy theory you are considering, we know the degrees of freedom, we know uh, the symmetry ruling uh, that theory. And so what you can do to capture uh, the unknown physics, we can actually, you know, there's a nice way, which is called the group invariant polynomial construction that I'll, you know, introduce briefly here. Uh, and, and then you can construct the um, a complete set of independent effective uh, operators. So that's the big, uh, you know, gigantic point uh, um, that I have uh, drawn. So that actually encompasses all the uh, effective operators. For example, let's say to make your life simply uh, for, uh, framework. Uh, so we restrict ourselves for let's say dimension six operators for the time being. So these actually encapsulate the, all the dimension six effective uh, operators which are basically independent. And now, uh, I'm looking from the top side also. So we have this different kind of UV uh, theories. And first we restrict ourselves to let's say minimal extension of the standard model, like standard model extended by a single particle. It could be scalar or fermion, whatever, uh, with some phenomenological uh, reasons behind that. And then what we can do actually, uh, we can, in, uh, if those uh, particles are assumed to be very heavy, the non-standard model particles to be heavy, so then we can validate the notion of the effective field theory. Then we can integrate out uh, that heavy field and then we'll get 
the renewable part of the standard model lag engine and accompanied by different set of effective operators. And interestingly, for different theories, you will get different set of operators. And whatever be the theory in the UV theory, you cannot just surpass this big pond. So, so to say, you construct this big pond uh, from the bottom up side, and from the top down side, you get basically different kind of patches or islands. And those islands, based on the different kind of theory, they may have some overlap, they may be non overlapping, and so on. So then, at this level, MIPS level, actually, we are bringing down all the different non BSM theories. Uh, which are described by the standard model uh, part in degrees of freedom and the uh, symmetry. So now we may can be able to perform a competitive analysis based on the what kind of effective operator they are offering because those effective if, if we identify those effective operators, they know what kind of signatures they are offering. So you know so, so which kind of signal uh, could be a smoking and feature for what kind of uh, theories and so on. That could be. The necessary questions we can ask and possibly give a direction. So that is the basically the broad picture. And keeping this broad picture in mind, so we have actually what we have done is we have developed to different kind of uh, you know programs in our group. So one is basically based on the different kind of methodologies where we have developed different kind of methodologies in the context of effective field theory, uh, starting from uh, the very first which was the uh, automatization of the effect, uh, heavy operator, uh, sorry, heavy field, uh, which is the covariant data expansion. And then from the bottom up, of course, we have different kind of programs and so on the classification. So these are the you know, uh, uh, things that based on the methodology side. And then relying on those methodologies, we have shown that, okay, so what kind of analysis one should perform? And uh, why these analysis are so much interesting, we're trying to describe uh, that thing. So those are basically captured in this uh, five papers. But I must say, I mean, our program is not, uh, we are not done yet. Maybe it will take uh, more three, four years and possibly then uh, we can, you know, re uh, may possibly reach uh, towards the dream uh, that we are aiming to solve uh, for uh, last uh, five years. So this today's uh, story that I'll be talking about is mostly based on the methodology side. And uh, I will not talk about much about the analysis side, but I suggest if, um, some of you are interested on how these you know, anal analysis parts, so especially the interfacing between the theoretical results and the experimental results, uh, how they are uh, being used and putting the bounds and all those things, I would suggest to uh, consult uh, these uh, up -to -date, uh, references. So uh, this is the uh, point that uh, I, I'll actually uh, gradually develop and uh, that will uh, try to create the story. So first I'll introduce the bottom-up approach and the top-down approach. Uh, so what is the consequences of this thing? Because we are actually dealing with both of them because we're trying to pinning down our um, uh, query from both ends. And then I'll uh, talk about that, okay, so if you have a different kind of BSM series, how do they look like in the effective version? And then I also somehow in a very sketchy you know, way that uh, there's a diagrammatic approach and that, uh, how there's a correspondence of the observers and based on that, what kind of conclusions we can uh, infer. And, and then based on that, how do we classify different kind of BSM, how to club them different kind of theories which apparently look different, but in the effective uh, notion, they have some kind of similarities. And uh, then I uh, propose there are future directions relying on the uh, observation of the new particles. If you observe some new particles, then how to modify our uh, concept about the known concept. And then uh, I'll talk about uh, from the experimental point of view that if uh, tomorrow uh, there are some kind of excess of the animal in the data, and which can be described by some kind of one or two, you know, the effective operators. Then as a theoretician you know, or the model builder, if I ask the question that, okay, so what kind of model I want to build uh, so that I can explain the data. Uh, so that's called the reverse engineering, uh, looking into the um, data side. So instead of having a blind hunch uh, for this model building, uh, that what should be the guideline? So we propose some kind of diagrammatic technique. Uh, I'll briefly introduce uh, that thing. And another interesting aspect that in the context map, um, uh, how to uh, realize the city violation and um, uh, what the possible source of that and so on. So that will um, uh, complete uh, in, uh, today's story. Uh, well, so in the uh, bottom line approach, um, uh, so what we have actually to start with, we have the low energy theory. So I'm saying the low energy theory. So you have, you need two information. So one is the symmetry. Principles, what are the symmetries? It could be space time, it could be global, it could be gauge, all the symmetries. 
you have the information and also you have the information about the degrees of freedom uh, or that uh, particles uh, uh, so we call them the lighter degrees of freedom so for us uh, at the scale where we are constantly if it's operated so those are basically like a standard model is a good theory and it's a like a you know, verified theory so for us the standard model is the low energy theory so now when it has standard model we can have the universal interactions and we can draw this kind of you know that diagram but if I have to capture the uh, BSM uh, assets or the non-standard model assets, and I have no clue about what kind of BSM could be, so what we can do actually, we can add this higher dimension effective operator starting from dimension to five. And you know, with the standard model, uh, particle content or symmetry, you can have the Weinberg operator uh, and which generates a new you know, uh, map. But in the dimension six, you have different kinds of you know, operator, different class of operators, and you add this operator. And they are suppressed by different kind of scale. Uh, we initially, from the theoretical side, we don't have any clue about the scale, and that actually eventually has to be consistent with the experimental observation, the valid, validating the effective field theory, and so on. We can um, uh, have some kind of idea about those um, uh, scale, which is the lambda here, and the accompanying uh, coefficient, the c i, um, they are called the Wilson coefficients. And when you talk about from the bottom of approach, okay, so these Wilson coefficients are basically not related to each other, and they are effectively free completely uh, free parameter. So and uh, and the bottom of approach is basically trying to capture the effect of the new physics, which exact whose exact notion we don't know. But there's another way to look into this thing is basically you start with your favorite UV uh, BSM uh, theory or uh, some simple extension of the standard model. Okay, and then if you draw the diagrams and so on, so basically you just uh, look into some process, which can be, you know, like a pure standard model process, you have the pure new uh, physics kind of process, or you have a standard model to standard model, uh, final and outgoing state, and in between, you have the new physics effects are there. So our primary focus on those diagrams, where the new physics is appearing inside, is it a three-level propagator or through the loop? So then what you can do, we can integrate out those uh, heavy uh, modes, and then we get the effective operators. So here, also you can request the Lagrangian after integrating out as like a renewable standard, renewable standard model Lagrangian and accompanying by the effective operators. So here, the lambdas are basically the heavy states that you are basically integrating out, they're related to each other. And the Wilson coefficients, unlike the previous one in the bottom of approach, we do not have clue about them, but now the Wilson coefficients are basically a function of the BSM uh, parameters and uh, this thing. So that's why here, the Wilson coefficient may be related to each other, you know, unlike the previous one. So that we have to uh, keep in mind. So now what we have uh, done actually, I mean, you know, uh, looking for uh, multiple theories uh, coming down from BSM to effective uh, field theory level. So you need to really integrate them out. And to do so, we had introduced uh, the automatized code, which is the, called the co codec. So uh, codec we define as the Wilson coefficient calculator. So this actually uh, complete one loop Wilson coefficient may you get within a, a second of time. And what does it do actually? You just define your BSM Lagrangian, and then you just identify the way to identify which is the BSM part of the mass and the quantum numbers and all those things. And then you will get the Wilson coefficient at the three level and also up to one loop level. And those operators are actually first generated at the scale where you are integrating out. And then if you want them and to run them down, that provision is also there. You can uh, use this element dimension matrices and run them down at the low scale and you get the low scale Wilson coefficients. Okay, so this is uh, actually fully uh, automatized uh, uh, thing. And uh, so what is done so far that we can integrate out the heavy scalar particles from where, when the standard model is extended by a single or multiple heavy scalar. Uh, we can deal with the heavy light mixing. So I'll uh, uh, briefly diagram and tell you what is the meaning of heavy light mixing, where you have heavy propagators as well as the standard model propagators. Uh, okay, heavy light mixing for the scalar particles and different identities, uh, equation of motion, integrating by parts, all are basically incorporated so that you can, you know, <coughs> sorry, you can actually get and ensure that what the operators you are getting, they're basically not related to each other, they're really independent of and so on. And we have been able to actually integrate out the heavy fermions uh, with the multiple heavy uh, fermions which are degenerate. Okay, these aspects are there. And there are some um, things we are um, going to introduce in near future and the works are um, going on. Uh, so like mixed statistics, that means in the loops, you have a um, field of propagators of like fermionic nature by nature or the um, scalar simultaneously. 
So that kind of thing we need we are in the process of developing and also heavy light mixing for the in the case of fermions. And then so far what we are calculating is up to dimension six. And the next level, we try to reach out to the dimension eight uh, when we, and automatize them to calculate the tree level and one loop uh, operator. So I'll not spend much time here. So for, and if you're really interested to know the uh, much more about this thing, so you can keep an eye on uh, Sakil's talk, I think uh, today uh, after lunch. So there's another thing uh, code that we have developed uh, from the bottom side. So when you have the information about the uh, symmetry and the particle content, and then you try to calculate the effective operators. So um, uh, we define the lag engine as a invariant um, um, group invariant polynomial. So that's um, what called this um, grid. So um, uh, if you um, uh, are interested, you can see that, okay, so this contains the main program and also there are lots of models, example models are uh, there. And, uh, you know, um, uh, and it is actually equally applicable for, you know, standard model and also in terms of superficies and all those things. And this is the flow chart of that program. So what you have to define as an user, you can find a model name, you just introduce the symmetry group, like for space time is restricted to three plus one. So you don't need to really bother about that thing that is inbuilt in there. And, uh, and you have to talk about only the global symmetry and the gauge symmetry there. So you just define the symmetries uh, and the uh, field uh, classes and also the field strength uh, tensor because the operators that you'll be getting in terms of the quantum field and the field tensor, not the gauge field because they are basically marked within the coven derivative. And then uh, the grid part is basically like a black box to you, but you can certainly look into that thing. And as an output, it will fit uh, the, all the invariant independent operators, uh, okay, in a, in a polynomial form. And from there, if you have the knowledge at the level of physical disorder, uh, you can really construct those covalent um, operators, okay? So that's the uh, beautiful part about uh, this thing. Uh, okay, so now, uh, so, uh, so, so now you can possibly relate the question that we asked that why need to develop the codec and the um, uh, grid. So you can see now, so codec will help you to bring down different kind of BSM series uh, in the next level to get those small patches and grip will help you to get this big um, font. So in, do, in, in, so in, the, in the energy scale, so in the both sides, from the top down and the bottom, we actually try to pinning down and try to, you know, identify the correct nature uh, of the new critic. So yeah, so that's the UV and IR side are doing this thing. So now, uh, so the interesting um, part is basically you have different kind of, you know, um, observable, right? So uh, now, uh, from the effective field, it is much easier if you know that, okay, so if you classify those observables and try to identify what kind of operators actually they are contributing, right? So then what you can do actually, so you can think of those observable, nothing but a set of observables, set of operators, effective operators. So now if you have those set of effective operators, so then you just, you know, just go back to this slide and then you try and take your favorite BSM theory, you just use codec and you get a set of effective operators and then see, okay, so these observers actually, you know, affected by this set of operators and this model offers me some operators, not all of them. So that's the way actually this set of, set of operators of the observer actually bridging your theory to the experimental result. So that's the uh, part here we try to emphasize. So for example, which are basically well measured quantity like electric vision observables at the leading order, we have these blue colored operators are there. So now if your theory offers to this operator, that means you need to really consider the electric vision observable um, at the leading order result. And that is going to constrain your parameter space. Now you can go beyond that thing at the inner level, the electric vision observable, and you have some more operators you can see in those red color operator and the partial color you know, operator, right? And these operators will give you further contribution to the EWPO, electric vision observable at the end of the level. So now if your theory actually offers you uh, this kind of operator, so that means basically your theory, theoretical, uh, in the, in the, in your theory, the BSM parameter space will be constrained by them. And then you can add more and more observable like Higgs you know, signal sense, you know, blah, blah, blah. And once you add them again and again, that will actually, you know, make it the operator set becomes larger and larger and so on. And that means the other way we have a more and more data you are incorporating to constrain your theory. So that's why 
man from the executive field and from the perform we try to pin down we try to understand that okay these kind of observable are are actually function or may getting affected by what kind of operator set if we can identify that thing then our task is much much easier so now you might be wondering that okay so why does uh, the ewp nlo 1 and 2 what does it mean so it is it is just you know to perform some kind of analysis we have you know artificially did that thing but of course once you are working at the nlo level you have been put one and two both set up operators the reason is that we see the part of the ewp nlo um, uh, operators actually also having the uh, uh, have a uh, uh, contribution to the higgs signal strength so you know to just to you know understand those things individually in a great detail we have separated out uh, those things but this is just part of the methodology that we are uh, deriving here there's nothing uh, in some sense physical principle uh, behind that and um, uh, apart from this uh, what you can have you can have a additional set of operators okay so these operators are not uh, going to affect your the kind of observers i uh, talked about but you can certainly come up with a new set of observers okay which are getting affected by uh, these operators then uh, you will suggest okay but your theory let's say give you this addition some of the addition of operators then you know until you include this addition of operators okay so your uh, theory may uh, cannot be completely constrained or maybe it's a, some parameter space will be relaxed so you can suggest okay so why don't you include this addition of observers and uh, so on Uh, similarly like if you have a uh, bl violating um, operators then any kind of observation observers related to bl violating operators which you include so they will be further constrained and so on so that's why you know uh, adding and adding uh, different kind of observers will always help you to understand the uh, time distance and the uh, new physics in a better way so what we have done based on this thing so uh, we try to classify different kind of bsm uh, theories now as i told to start with in our codec what you can do we have a uh, much better handle when the start in the heavy field is basically scalar uh, particles because we can integrate out the scalar part heavy scalar particles at the t level at the one loop level including the heavy heavy loop and the heavy light mixing everything so we have considered uh, this minimal extension of the standard model um, by color singlet object so these six uh, models are uh, there uh, so what you do is standard model extension by a, Means pure means real singlet by complex singlet by real type individual. So basically, we extend the standard model by one particle. So you may ask me the question now. Okay, so why do I restrict um, to one particle? So you can always add multiple particle, and codec is able to um, handle uh, that thing also. But the primary thing is basically try to understand their individual um, pattern of their interaction. And if I look into their individual interactions of the individual patterns of this uh, or the quantum numbers of different particles, that will help us to understand better. But always you can add uh, multiple particles and you can uh, make your life complicated. And not only the color signals, but also we have uh, 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 the about the colored uh, particles uh, as well, uh, like uh, different kind of left to quarks and all basically extends and are based on different kinds of phenomenology. And we try to you know. in my perform an exhaustive uh, provide you the exhaustive list of uh, heavy scalars that people are really interested in the literature uh, but you know uh, we may miss something so if you find that some of the favorite some of your favorite particles heavy scalar is missing in this list so please communicate to us and we will uh, give you the specific papers for that model as well so now once we have that thing so uh, you can actually integrate them out and at the scalar uh, thing as i was telling you that at the t level when you mean basically the heavy propagator is basically appearing at the t propagator okay or then you can have the heavy heavy loop what i mean basically in the loop all the propagators are basically the heavy field there is no light field but you can have a this kind of diagram where you um, some of the propagators are heavy fields some of the propagators are standard model like light field so they are called the heavy light mixing so if you have to make uh, 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 If you have to more realistic calculation, you have to input the heavy light mixing as well. And these all three are basically automatized in the at the codec uh, for the scalar. So now you can see we have adapted all these sixteen models, and we have given uh, this set of operators, and this cross implies that these operators are not being generated up to one loop. So this is very important. We cannot say this operator is not being generated at any level because we two loop we do not know. it may appear in the two loop level but we are restricting ourselves to the one so hl in 
implies that okay for the qhg operator uh, for the singlet scalar if you add then you integrate out then this qhg operator can be generated through the one loop uh, calculation and that will be through the heavy like uh, mixing and then similarly qhg box operator the 11 number 11 operator which is the t that means still this operator is generated at the t level completely that means basically in principle when you calculate you will not stop calculating at the t level if that qhg box operator is been is being generated are being getting some contribution from the loop level we are also including that but here i am mentioning only the dominant first dominant contribution is coming from which level for example qhd is missing if you conclude if, if you include only t level and heavy heavy mixing then this operator is not appearing but the dominant contribution first time will be appearing from the heavy light mixing but qhd box is coming at the t level but you may get some addition contribution from the loop as well and based on that actually we have noted uh, that okay so which operator actually for different kind of observable set okay appearing at what level and so on so that's the classification we did and similarly including for the ew yes i have a question regarding this i mean this is a similar yeah. question i asked uh, michael in the morning so let's say you have uh, one operator that is coming from the sm at one loop okay mm. and you have some bsm model there it is coming mm. at the tree level mm. okay so if you want to analyze so what is the approach here because the bsm okay. contribution at the tree level and mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's say uh, you are writing a effective extension that is at the tree level but then the one loop has actually contributed uh, with the sm contribution this operator can also be found at one loop uh no so plus singlet extension okay mm -hmm. so now now you are saying that okay so your uh, your write down the renewable bsm lagrangian involving this singlet scalar okay mm -hmm. and then you just integrate out singlet scalar up to one loop level that means basically you are looking into so that because the smith operator okay are consist of only the standard model particles there is no singlet scalar right right so that means basically the bsm particles appearing in some this blob if you unfold that blob it may be t level it may be one loop everything and you are including all the diagram i see i see you are including even 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 let's say the sm is giving those operator one loop that is also included exactly so that's what i'm trying to say like for example like look at the number 11 operator qh box though i have mentioned it to be t but when you actually really calculate that operator and the wilson coefficient okay you will not stop your calculation at the t level because the full calculation should go to up to one loop level okay so then you are basically getting the wilson coefficient corresponding to t level operator and sorry as a t level calculation heavy light mixing heavy heavy everything full one loop thing i mean up to one loop thing i see okay mm -hmm. so that's the approach we are having Okay. So, so I, I, I have one more yeah, question. Yeah, Sorry, I'm interrupting. Yeah, please, please. No, no, please, so, please. Hmm. No, so let's say uh, uh, this is, uh, I mean, this is, op I mean, top-down operator approach. But yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, have you tried putting this in some kind of, let's say, electric scale parameterization uh, matching, like UPMNS kind of matching uh, with those operator? Uh, you mean the match? When you when you talk about the UPMNS and all those things, basically you are talking about the flavors now, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just giving an example. That could be other kind no. of electric uh, parameter. No, that is okay. So the the thing is basically so far the kind of observables we are talking about, okay, they are flavor blind, frankly speaking. Mm -hmm. Okay, or even that there are some polar observable we are talking about. We are basically relying on the third generation only. I see. Okay, but. If you try to really include the flavor data and all those things, because these are basically you are talking about the electric scale. So if you want to go down at the MB scale, so on, then the flavor data and all those things will be more important. And then you have to incorporate also the flavor dependence and all those things. But at this level, at this level, like when you talk about the 17, 18, 19, those operators, okay, they are basically flavor blind. We are not including any kind of flavor dependent data so far. Mm -hmm. But like I do not, uh, I cannot actually uh, say right now. But let's say what I'm trying to say. Let's say you have mm -hmm. these operators uh, 
and uh, but then there is also this experimental parameterization right certain things that we know they are experimentally measured yes. so exactly that's what can, i'm saying uh, so you can see this thing that's what happened so ewplo okay so uh, you have the so, so that means basically you are parameterizing in terms of this operator that contribution yeah yeah so it is already done in some sense yeah. exactly so these three reference i have beautifully and did that too actually okay 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 thanks okay but i would say uh, now the things have been slightly different in the sense so this parameterization in our, in our latest paper we did a different way because see, if you can perform the parameterization it will give generally give uh, most of the people earlier a total cross section a total number where there is no angular dependence on all those things but now it is why to what people do actually they give in terms of d sigma d omega the differential one just to capture the high pt and all those things okay and then what you uh, do actually you just perform some kind of analysis and try to fit the parameter and from the fitting you try to get the analytic form in terms of man, this will uh, will some question mm -hmm. this is what so, exactly the, my question was yes exactly exactly yeah. that's the way you can do so i would suggest if you just look into our latest paper okay and so that has been done there for different for, for all the up to the observable up for this 2020 data including the 2020 data okay okay good for that okay so thanks. okay yeah yeah thank you so shall i proceed please proceed yeah okay okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah. So man. So this is the basically man, different models. Uh, I'm just man, showing you man, how to uh, what are the operators and all those things that are being generated. So now, based on this thing, so what we are doing actually, we are designing a different kind of you know man, man, screen. I would say. So and then that will help you to understand more this observable DSM classification correspondence. So what we do. So for example, the street this EWPLO, you know, in the observable set as like a man, screen. Okay, and then you find that okay, so you have in the left hand side you have a favorite uh, this uh, model. So we have adapted this, uh, you know, the 15 defined models, and then at that and we integrate out those individual fields so we know what kind of effective operators are being generated for individual models, and then we are passing them to the EWPLO, and then in the right hand side we are collecting them and they classify them. We are finding that. These 15 models can be dumped into four different classes. What does it mean, this class? That means basically, if you rely only on the EWPLO, then you cannot really distinguish these models which are which belong to the class one. That means H2, to his doublet extension or the complex triplet extension or the complex trip, uh, quadruplet or the different kind of lepto quarks. Okay, so these models give you the exact set, exact operator which actually appear in the EWPLO. So looking into the EWPLO, you cannot really distinguish uh, these models. They are almost treated as a degenerate. Similarly, in the there are other six uh, models which actually are treated on the same footing from the EWPLO reference frame. So that's why they are clubbed in class two. But there are at least one operator which either present in class one or class two which affect EWPLO. So that operator is exclusively that are present in the class one or class two, which cannot simultaneously present in both. So, so that operator is a smoking gun feature to discriminate class one and class two, okay? Similarly, the class three, it contains only single operator with the complex, uh, I think the real triplet, okay? Because it gives, you, it gives some operator which does not belong to either class one, class two or class four. So that means you can get uh, four, uh, patches for island okay which have their own feature each of them contains at least one operator and that operator will not belong to other classes and when i'm talking about the operators and all those things i am focusing only those operator set which actually affect the ewplo okay so that means the ewplo will help you to uh, you know make, make a catalog that okay you have a four different classes so now, if you perform the analysis, you can discriminate four different classes based on this thing, but the models within the same class, they are difficult to be distinguished. And then we include this six signal set. And then we perform the same thing. We forget about the WPO LO screen now. We just focus, we think at a single point, you are including only the Higgs signal set. 
and then you have these models okay you pass through them okay and based on the kind of operators they offer you get now six different classes so now in class h1 you can see that h2 delta 1 and uh, the uh, sigma I mean, the guy, uh, so sigma they are uh, there so now you can see immediately the discrepancy here so not just given the differences uh, is that the ewplo fails to distinguish theta 1 theta 2 is the h2 delta 1 but heat signal strength includes certain kind of operator and based on that operator actually you can differentiate this theta 1 theta 2 models with the h2 delta 1 model so that's why they belong to different classes now so now it's your four class you have six different classes and you can clap them and these things you can keep doing and keep on doing this thing ewp nlo2 kind of operators you include you will get this set of different classes and similarly you invoke some kind of observers which actually rely uh, on this additional operators and they can also classify like this so now the question is really what will happen if i introduce all the observers simultaneously okay so that is gap in this picture now so what you do actually you start with this 15 model and you put this different observer skin simultaneously so that means that they will pass through one by one so unlike the previous case when you talk about the single screen then they do not have the memory of other observers but now they have the memory of the other observers one just spit out okay they cannot call it again so in this way if you just go put go on putting this different kind of screens at the end of the day you can see that most of them actually are singled out okay and unfortunately theta 1 theta 2 chi 1 are still you know talking to each other and, and they are seeking to each other similarly chi to chi and delta 1 sigma but apart from them all are singled out and that tells you that okay that means basically these individual models have their own signaging signature operator which does not appear in other cases and based on that operator if you can you know, devise something maybe possibly we can uh, track down those kind of uh, class of models or those kind of class of new physics so, so that's the way we're trying to you know give an, an impression that okay so how to uh, you know uh, first start with different we club the, all the models together and then pass to this different kind of observable skin and then see what will happen and then it will tell you that okay if you have these observers possibly these two models or these three models are really difficult to be you know identify uh, even after getting some different kind of data but there are certain models which can be distinguished based on this kind of operator set so that's the message uh, 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 captured here so now uh, I was talking about the bottom half and the top down. So I'll not go into the, how do you perform and all those things because that is a completely different ball game and all those things. What I'm trying to emphasize here that from the bottom up approach, when you actually look into let's say these three operators, okay, they have these nine operators. And from the bottom up side, those nine operators are not related to each other because as I mentioned, they're basically treated independently. So your degrees of freedom is larger. So you get basically, you know, larger, larger parameter the space. So, but when you talk about the individual models, so th though you get the nine operators, but their corresponding nine Wilson coefficients are related to each other because they are functions of the BSM parameters. So then, for example, there are only three BSM parameters are there. You, there's a huge amount of reduction of the uh, uh, degrees of freedom. And then you can see for individual models, if there's a minuscule parameter space, which is basically consistent with the uh, data. So that's the message that I want to convey here, that from the bottom up side, when you perform the analysis, it will give you always the overestimation about uh, this thing. So it's not a good idea to borrow that range and use that directly for any individual model. It's better idea is basically to start with an individual model and try to understand their correlations and then come down and then possibly you get much more constant thing. Fine. So this is a story about this. If you have the snake and all those things. So now we have been we are being a bit uh, fortunistic and we are actually optimistic. I would uh, say as uh, the future directions. So what will happen if you find a new particle? Okay, let's say it's a singly charged scalar or a double um, scalar or some neutral scalar, CP even or CP or whatever. Then uh, and you don't find anything again. So then you want to capture again the new physics using this effective field theory approach. But along with the standard uh, particles, now you have actually have these new particles. So you have to extend the SMEP site. And to get that idea, 
we developed this paper, uh, this is the effective operator basis for the BSM EFT. So exactly the basic, the, you just modify that cartoon and that I showed earlier, that uh, here from the bottom up side, earlier I was, the, uh, my low energy theory is the standard model, but now my low energy theory is standard model extended by a uh, complex singlet uh, with a different hypercharge or doublet or real tip and so on. And then you have to develop uh, the big pond first. And this big pond uh, will not be the SMEP, but it's like a BSM FT basis. Okay, it's a more operators will be there. And to compute those operators, actually you may take the help uh, from our code, which is uh, the uh, grip. And then again, you start with your favorite BSM theory, you just come down. And now what you'll do, you will integrate out all the fields, but now along with the standard model, like a digital freedom, you will keep the, uh, the newly discovered particle is also lighter. You will not integrate out that particle. So that is basically, you know, one step ahead uh, of the same story uh, once you discover uh, some new particle. And if you want to know more about the BSN HP and their impact and what kind of phenomenal impression they can have, so you can keep an eye on uh, today Upala Pandas uh, talk. So yeah, so this BSM of uh, these fields are chosen uh, based on the what kind of more complete theories we are interested in. For example, if you synthesize a partial or left asymmetry, from there you you can make uh, the same single charge, double charge, scalar, I can need to know different collective bus lighter and which is your favorite, and based on that you can consider your BSM basis. And for uh, for, uh, for the audience, what we uh, did actually we have incorporated all such models in the group already. Uh, so if you um, if your model is basically uh, Related to this, you can look into this, or you can develop using our grip by your own. Fine. So now the another now the question that I want to ask is uh, if you from the experimental side, if you discuss some kind of anomaly in your data or some interesting features in the data, and actually you can see that okay, if you have these or these 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 operators uh, are uh, effective operators there to explain that data, then the next uh, question would be if I have to build a new um, Lagrangian, the BSM Lagrangian, how to do that thing? Because for that, I need the knowledge that, okay, so what kind of BSM heavy field should be there in the UV Lagrangian such so that if I integrate out that particle, then at the low energy, I must get these, these operators which can extend that data. Okay, so the, for that, we have developed this structure which is called the EFT, EFT Diagrammatica. This will give you the UV routes to the CP conserving map. And for example, you can see, for example, if you have a five square five two operator, okay, then you first foster, we first foster the Lorentz invariant structure, okay, and then we uh, try to find out um, from the symmetry principle that, okay, so these are the basically orange colors are basically your heavy fields, okay, what kind of heavy field would be there? For example, like Q for the QEH operator, okay, so with the minimal interaction, you can have um, either one, two half or one, one geo, and this kind of fermion, uh, um, uh, this kind of fields are there, you will get. A QUH operator from uh, for this class. If you have these these heavy fields and uh, so on, okay. And for psi four operator, you have these fields which will lead to this kind of operator. So I'm not going into detail, uh, but uh, I think you can keep an eye on Suraj talk, who will be discussing this thing, this construction, and their integrations in uh, great detail. Well, so I'm almost at the end of my end part of my talk. So there I'll just give you the uh, glimpse about the CP virus in the context of SMEP. So you have this uh, dimension six level, you have this CP even and the CP in their counterpart of CP odd operator. So what we noted actually, if you have a heavy fundamental, multiple heavy fundamental, and then you can, uh, and in the BSM lagging, and if you have a CP virus in the u cross sector, okay, you integrate out that heavy fundamental, and then you generate the CG operators at the one loop uh, level. Uh, for example, the it, 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 diagrammatically, and this is a toy diagram kind of thing. So you, you just uh, in the left hand side you have this uh, effective operators uh, um, belong to phi squared x squared. X is basically your field tensor, and phi is basically a scalar, right? And then in the one loop you can put those uh, size which are basically heavy fermions. Now you can see a single heavy fermion cannot lead to this kind of operator. You need multiple heavy fermions, and you mostly they are like vector like, and their vertices. Have the CP violation, so it's like A plus B gamma phi in the Utah sector. And now, once you you know uh, unfold uh, this diagram, then you see you can have different kind of vertex factors while computing diagram. There can be A times A, it can be B gamma phi times B gamma phi, or it can be A times B gamma phi. So now, when it's A squared, that will lead to CP conserving operators. 
when you have a big RFI square, that will also lead to the city of conserving operator. But when you have a cross terms like A times B RFI, because of the presence of RFI in the loop, okay, under the test, that will lead to the city violating operator. So that's why you will always get the city con violating operators, which are basically accompanied by their uh, partner city conserving operators. So what we have noted that just generate, that you cannot generate a city or operators while you are switching up completely the CP even operator and if that will be generated. Now there are recent coefficients, you can make a fine tune the parameter space to make them very, very small. That's a different story, but the operators will be always generated. But the reverse is not true. You can certainly generate the CP conserving operators and CP variety generators may not be there because you know, in the equal sector, if you do not have the CP variety, don't generate this kind of operators. And we have also tracked down that there are certain operators which is the OW tilde, uh, that's epsilon mu nu rho sigma and w cube, that operator, okay, that operator at the one loop level, we failed to generate, okay? So our conclusion is that that operator can be generated dominantly only at the two loop level. So we have done the calculation uh, uh, analytically and then so at the two loop level, how this city conserving city to hiding operators have been generated. And just to give you one, uh, sorry, uh, just to give you one uh, example, so we have added the vector like leptons and these two papers, and here you can see the sigma and the etas are basically your uh, digit um, uh, heavy uh, farm vector like fermions. And once you integrate them all, you get this one loop matching result. And the first three are basically your uh, CP violating uh, operators. Okay, so I'm not going to details that, but I just wanted to show that how you generate them. Okay, so these are my take home methods uh, that aim, as I told, to pin down the character of the UV theory. And so for that, we failed to have a uh, complementary of both uh, bottom up and the top down approaches are much needed. And then, uh, and, and then observers realized in terms of the effective operators are really helpful to adjust the BSM and perform those kind of analysis. And you know, the identification of the heavy field for individual SMEP operators is just like a guideline for model building instead of having a uh, you know, blind hunch. And, and if you have a new part, if you're lucky enough, if we are lucky enough in the future to find some new particle, then possibly we have to redo our calculation for the SNP and you know, we have to extend our new particles so that they use the freedom and the new operators we have to add and that will be the error of the uh, BSM EFT. And I think for today, that's all. And thank you for your patience. Uh, so thank you, Jody, for a wonderful lecture. So now is question time. So please raise hand or write in the chat box if you have any questions, comments. Okay, I don't see. Am I audible? Yeah, money yes, money money. Money. Yeah. I think. Uh, Manimala, unfo unfortunately, I cannot hear you, Monimala. Monimala, your voice is breaking. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, now. Yes, now it's better. It's fine. Okay, so uh, thanks for the wonderful uh, talk. And um, I, I think I have missed one point. So uh, yes. there are, for example, models uh, where neutrino mass uh, is generated in uh, two loop or things like that. So uh, have you also included those models in, uh, in this catalog or? Uh, no, okay. Yeah. okay, no, the reason is basically so far in the post of automation, uh, we have been able to you know, um, um, uh, able to uh, automatize in the codec up to one loop. Okay, okay. Okay, so that's why if the um, fields and, uh, um, are in, and, and, and interesting features are coming up at the two loop level dominantly, and because there is no one loop or three level contribution, then I think we'll be missing that thing. And that's the reason actually we could not include. But, but we are hopeful that as to, you know, you know, future, if we can include that up to two loop thing, then possibly again, those models will be including. Okay, but okay. but we are focusing only those models uh, which have some interesting feature up to one loop. Okay, okay, okay. So this is the, the, yeah because we could not do automatize up to two loop level. Mm -hmm. So uh, is there any other question? Uh, yes. There are, uh, one one raise hand. Yeah. Huh. So my question might be sound very naive, but I just want to know. I am curious mm -hmm. that let's say from a coding point of view. Is yeah. it possible, let's say, if I put the input as the initial and final state topologies of the mm -hmm. states, 
and hmm. from there can i think a coding way ki which of the operator should be a useful or relevant and which are not like those kind of way operator study can be possible as a coding point of view uh, so basically what you are, if i uh, understand your question that okay when you send talk topology basically you uh, are giving the in state and out state that means basically it, you you are giving yes. basically the so so basically you are talking about the two going to four kind of process or something like that yes 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 like because so those two, so, okay. uh, uh, those yeah. topologies so has some uh, underlying operators right many operators yes, can yes, have same exactly. topology exactly that's the reason actually we develop this thing now you can see here like the size square phi cube right so you can say that size i going to phi 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 this process you are calculating hmm. right hmm. so so this uh, paper actually give you the list of all exhaustive structures up to dimension 6 um, topologies okay so but, the, what i'm but, saying uh, uh, yeah so uh, mass dimension so so if your topology includes up to you add on the on um, external state mass dimension up to 6 okay you will get all the topologies in this paper okay okay but uh, is there a way to now distinct key how which or uh, for a let's say for one topology if there are five operators then how from experimental data can i distinguish that like in that way is there a way okay so for that what you do is so what, what you are saying topology in my language is basically it's a representation of some effective operator right because you can yes. think yes. of the yes. topology ha, ha, because ha. because just add the instead and outset in a blob so basically mm -hmm. you look like a effective right so mm -hmm. for that you have to do you have to go back and you have to check this thing uh, for example okay sorry uh, where was the observable correspondence just give you uh, uh, yeah so now all are basically the operators which actually those topologies where the mass dimension of the outer state instead and outside add up to dimension six okay mm -hmm. and then you take your operator topology and then find out that that belong to which set and then immediately you know that which observable actually will be affected by the presence of that force. Okay. So that's the task on you can find out. Okay. So is there other questions? Uh, yeah, Jaydeep, I have one question. Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, actually, uh, means actually, I actually I'm learning your codex software. So mm -hmm. it's giving output uh, this uh, Wilson coefficient. So mm -hmm. actually for the collider analysis, uh, means mm -hmm. Can you I mean, can you add something that so that uh, the output come like as a UFO code so that I can add with the standard model and I can get the effect okay. uh, from the matching so, kind of thing. Okay, so what I suggest actually, uh, so uh, okay, certainly man, that's an interesting aspect to look at. But unfortunately, as you know, I don't have anyone who's an collider expert, frankly speaking, in my group here right now. Okay. Whoever does that, they are they, either they left or they are living for post So, so, so but, I, but I can give you a way out for that. Thing. There is some code called the SMFT effort. Okay. Okay. SMFT effort. So what you can do, you generate the effective operator from the codec. Okay. And the SMFT mm -hmm. effort, it already included all the possible SMFT 59 operators, let's say. Okay. With included. Mm -hmm. So what you can do, now for a given model, you get, let's say, 10 or 15 operators. Okay. So in the SMFT mm -hmm. operator, just looking to the codec output, you can just keep those 15 and make others to be zero. And those 15 operators, their analytic form, you can include in the SMFT effort in terms of the BSM field, because you get the Wilson coefficient from the codec. Okay. And then you can get the SMFT yeah. for output from there and in the mad graph, and then you can start this one. Okay. Okay. One, 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 just last question. It's just technical. Yeah, sure. So, mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes uh, when actually I am running your codex, so sometimes it's mm -hmm. need the internet connectivity on the Mathematica. <laughs> Can you, uh, means, uh, that should means not be. That why should, uh, that, this is so... That should, not, that should not be maybe where you are working. They don't allow you to run Mathematica without internet. <laughs> but mm -hmm. we have run, you know, in the offline Mathematica mode. Uh, so possibly it, it has some problem with the mathematical license in your institute or something like that. You know, yeah. I don't have license in my. I don't have license. That's why okay. I'm asking. Uh, because we know because we have run yeah. because you know we, we have run yeah. our from a codec and everything in the offline mode. You know, while traveling okay. in a train or something like that. So I think okay. you should be able to do that thing. Okay. okay.
so very nice so if there is is there another question or is there, i have a question actually uh so i don't see so maybe i can ask yeah joydeep i mean uh, this you mm-hmm. briefly mentioned this uh, while answering my previous question so huh. uh, nowadays these differential distributions are one of the electric uh, scale parameter that you can mm-hmm. compare so mm-hmm. recently uh, because i was following your work also in leptogor but we also investigated something called radiation amplitude zero but what mm-hmm. we did in in mm-hmm. isolating different especially the leptogor models but this idea if you have a massless gauge goes on in the final state mm. uh, and then you do get uh, amplitude zero at some point and you can actually mm. look for this but mm. the models that we analyze uh, are basically uh, where you have this uh, at the tree level so it would be interesting to see if you have mm. whatever one loop or two loop how much you can go how far you can mm. go that those radiation amplitude zero feature i think can also be uh, use yeah that's saying or used in this case to isolate even further because yes. that's yeah. like uh, this the theorem say it does not say that you should have at the tree level or or at uh, at uh, end loop okay okay so uh, so maybe what you can do in, uh, so because we have the handle up to one loop only yeah so uh, let's say if you can get operators at one loop which gives you one photon let's say yeah yeah then you can still check depending on the charge of this interaction and mm-hmm. that where the amplitude will go to zero and you can you can actually predict yes yes uh, yes 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 uh yes but so the I, first thing that you have to uh, check that okay so for the the leptogor extension that you are talking about it uh, actually can lead to that operator after being integrated or not that's the first step one has to do yes yes okay so right. because this is this more generic scenario because you you cover so many uh, different scenarios so mm-hmm. any any one loop effective operator if can give such certain massless uh, gauge boson uh, in the scattering then you can actually see what is the the point where the amplitude radiation amplitude is zero because yeah. that depends on the the charge and sometimes it depends on the mass also of the final stage but uh, basically charge of the so it would be interesting actually because we work yeah, with yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. i think you so maybe what we can do yeah maybe what you can do na so maybe we can sit some time okay uh-huh. because see uh, our primary notion is basically because you know the ewp1 hss are the you know so, so much promising results are there so we mm. basically focus on that thing but i think these models are offering other operators which do not belong to these two cases set of observers so now it may be the high time to look into some other observers okay so maybe maybe that could be important yeah, and is, yeah, yeah. and also actually i want to because you raised this issue, may, let me may, 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 may put another point here so that in a top down approach the interesting part is see from the bottom up approach what happened you have the operator and you look into this observable you look into this operators and do the phenomenology so you just put the other operators set to be zero but in the top down approach you cannot do even the operators which do not belong to or which do not directly affected by the ewpo or hick signal but still can be constant the reason is that addition operators is also function of the same dsm parameter which actually appears in the operators belonging to the ewp and hick signal strength so if you fit the wilson coefficient you actually fit past the bsm parameter okay so so that's the interesting part mm-hmm. so the operators which do not belong to ewp or hick signal strength can be still constant by that data because they are actually connected by the bsm same bsm parameter mm-hmm. so that, so now if you include a new observable that constant the bsm parameter in a much more stringent way possibly that will give you better effect compared to wp and hick signal you never know yeah i mean if you look at this uh, i think the work with uh, sonok and anirban i think two or three people mm-hmm. we focus mm-hmm. only on different uh, leptogor vector and the scalars and mm-hmm. it was possible to isolate them just looking at the some scattering where you have the photon in the final state but all this analysis okay. is based on tree level 
whereas you have mm-hmm. a upper hand because you have the effective operator even at one look yeah so exactly. so one can actually so maybe actually uh, yeah so we'll look into your uh, papers to get that which field which uh, will actually quasi was working on okay and then what we can do we can integrate them out and then get the effective operators okay and then possibly we can talk uh, okay mm-hmm. looking to the effective operator that could be yeah yeah i think we should talk some yeah. okay yeah, thank sure. you thank you great Yeah. so uh, is there any other questions or comment uh, or we can break for lunch i don't see so i'll thank uh, joy joydeep yeah. uh, again uh, for a very wonderful and exhaustive talk and i think this is very good work that you are doing and <laughs> i you. think you should give some uh, lecture to some schools also uh, to train them <laughs> how to use okay. this Yeah, I just okay. got effective field theory in my last semester here. <laughs> yeah. Also, this 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 code should be more popular, I guess. So, yeah. I think more yeah. people should uh, use it. So, I'll invite you for some time for IIT Hyderabad talk. Sure, sure, okay. sure, sure. Okay. So, okay, I thank, thank you very much. And, thank uh, you. Uh, uh, organizers, do you have any announcement? Uh, uh, from yeah, your so, side? Uh, we will break for lunch now, and then. very interesting talks by the students uh, that that session will start from 2:30 pm so thanks joydeep for for the very nice uh, uh, talk and uh, thanks uh, priyatusda for chairing this session so thank you all see you at 2:30 thank, okay. thank you bye bye thank you thank you bye bye